we're continuing our nest control family review and now we're looking at ac2 control family enjoy So the next one is AC2, which is account management, AC2 account management. And with account management in that same document, and this document usually would be like a system admin manual or system, um, um, you know, a policy document that contains um, details about that information system and the processes. All right, so this um, account management uh, AC2 control deals with um, organizations defining uh, the types of accounts that will be allowed. So it's basically account management, your man how you manage accounts. All right, so um, define what types of accounts. So you can have local accounts, you can have domain accounts, you can have admin accounts, read only um uh, read write you know so, uh, things of that nature assign account managers so these will be the people who have authority to approve um people from joining a particular group uh, to uh, get access to resources all right um assign users authorized users groups roles memberships so this will be um, everything that entails uh, account account management so roles list out all the different roles developers admins regular user um, what type of access they have um, the do's and don'ts uh, and things of that nature it's pretty self-explanatory and again the assessor would be looking for um, all those key areas and if they don't see it they will fail the control so these are the different enhancements and test steps so um, if you look at here where it says implemented by if you see O it means the organization if it says S is the system um, O slash S will be um, the system and organization um, so back to these control enhancements here, um, talks about disabled accounts. Um, we could look at first, let's go up to automated system account management. So when they talk about automated system account management, we're looking at, um, the tools or programs used to, um, manage, uh, accounts in an automated fashion so programs like active direct windows active directory um, will be perfect for this and let's see automated temporary and emergency account management so temp accounts would be um accounts that are used for a short period of time uh you know um how would you manage that let's look into the control here so it's talking about how you disable those accounts so these will be things you list in your um your document all right the document that pertains to that information system you would talk about um when people get, when people are done with a task, how do you disable that account? Um, what automated means are you using to disable account or, or, or provide a temp account? So with, within Windows Active Directory, you could actually set up the duration of an account. Say, okay, this uh, user, I'm gonna create this user account and this user is only gonna be here for a month so you set the account to expire in 30 days, okay? Let's go back to our table.
So disabled accounts, um, we kind of talked about that already. Um, what, how do you disable um, accounts? What, what's the policy around disabling user accounts? Automated audit actions. <clears throat> so um, when accounts are created, when accounts are disabled, when rights are being added, um, what mechanism are you using to track this? So let's look at that here. There we go. Automatically audit account creation, modification, enabling, disabling, removal actions. So um, some organizations will use um, a ticketing system. So you request for an account to be created, you request for an account to be deactivated, or you request for some, an account to be modified. So someone um, needs additional um, rights so they can access uh, resources so that account could um, be modified. Um, Windows Active Directory, again, is a good tool um, to use to automate these um, actions. And all these could be tracked in the event log as well. So as an assessor, you would be looking for either emails um, that show um, someone's requesting for an account, uh, someone's requesting for an account to be created, someone's request for an account to be disabled. Um, you also want to see the, the person who approved it. Um, and if it's a ticketing tool, you want to see those um, tickets, uh, screenshots of those tickets. Um, and then also um, maybe a screenshot from Active Directory as well. All right, so AC2, five, it says um, inactivity logout. So the organization needs to set up a, um, a time period when uh, if someone's system is inactive, so if, if someone's not working, actively working on their computer or their session is open, and they walk away, what time period do you define to um, log that person off? So this would be a um, something in, in group policy that's um, uh, in Windows, all right? So this will be some a setting in there um, where you could configure um, your activity to be um, locked out or logged out if um, there is inactivity, all right? So, so what types of evidence would you provide? One would be um, definitely you want to see something documented that says, oh, um, if there is five minutes of inactivity or 15 minutes of inactivity or whatever, um, you define uh, to be in uh, the time frame for inactivity. That needs to be stated in your policy document. And then um, you also want to provide screenshots of the configuration that says, hey, um, this was this is how it was set up 15 minutes uh, and it must match with the policy. I have a cybersecurity course called the Security Control Assessor course. This course trains you on how to become a security control assessor, also known as an SCA or a SCA. Now with this training, it's going to show you step by step on the job training what a security control assessor does, how the security control assessor prepares for an assessment. If you don't know who a security control assessor is, a security control assessor is one 
who assesses security controls. Security controls are things or measures that you put in place to reduce risk to an acceptable level. So this training will show you the ins and outs on how to become a uh, SCA. It also comes with a certificate of completion, um, resume, pr resume prep videos, uh, interview prep videos. It also comes with tons of resources, templates that you would use on the job. So if you are considering a career change or a field within cybersecurity that requires no technical skills, and it's only about the compliance side of cybersecurity, which deals with policies, procedures, and things of that nature. As a security control assessor, you're going to be looking at documentation, reviewing documentation, and writing your comments, saying, hey, this passes, this fails, this is not right, uh, this is correct. Uh, so that's pretty much what a security control assessor does. You look at evidence and you determine if the evidence is satisfactory or not. And you have a cheat sheet with you to um, use as your guide. So for more information, sign up for this course, and I promise you, you will not regret it. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We're also on IG at CyberFirst Solutions. Thank you.